Okay, uh, hi, good morning EFCOC and welcome to Sunday morning service. I uh, would we'll like to start off with a time for a prayer. Um, today's reading, uh, we wanna talk about Romans 8, 16 to 18. Uh, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit uh, that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified in him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. So um, this passage today, just uh, reading it, reminds us of even with all of these things going on, that we are reminded of like, you know, who we are and you know us being heirs of god as it is with jesus through um his sacrifice and that even with all the questions going on people are asking like you know where's god now that you know just in this moment the suffering that we are experiencing is just like it's for his glory that we know that um that he has a plan that he will show himself uh, even during these times and uh so with that, I would like to bring up our first, wait, <laughs> our uh, first point today. So I just wanna pray for, you know, again, that all things uh, are working towards his glory that we want to just uh, have a, a small time to pray and just, you know, let us remember that even with all this, that this will show, you know, how he works throughout, uh, even with all these questioning times. So uh, let's just have a short time for prayer.
I, dear God, I just want to um, pray for um, just uh, and thank you for today and even just the wonderful weather outside and everything that's been going on, God. I just want to pray that we remember um, uh, that everything is towards your good, God, and that we will be able to um, just remind ourselves of that even though we're uh, surrounded by uh, all these questions and just um, feeling lost, God, just remind us that you're there and that you have a plan and that you'll be able to um, just show the ones uh, comfort and guidance and um, praying for just, you know, the glory that comes after all of this, God, even during these times of trouble. And uh, God, I just also want to pray for, um, you know, uh, the leaders just all these people right now just um making all these big decisions god that i pray for um you know healing and for um everyone to be able to bond together even during these times and to be stronger after all this god and for you to show our uh, your glory um throughout uh, all these actions and um even with um you know times of darkness it doesn't compare to what you can um just you know um show all your miracles you know in these times all right this brings us to our second point um i stop saying that once. um praying for strength and fellowship during these times apart and remember the connection as a whole as a body of christ uh for this is just you know even though we're all quarantined you know that we can we're not limited to you know just physically can't be in church together like remember that church is not just the building but rather the people so let's take this time now to pray that we've all um bond together for strength and fellowship Um, God, just want to pray um, <clears throat> that uh, even with everyone in quarantine, God, just pray for everyone's continued health and safety. And um, God, just want us to be reminded that even though we're all um, just um, you know, uh, separate, that we're still together uh, in you, God. And God, I pray for um, just for this church and uh, this fellowship, and not only just us, but for all. Um, the other churches around the world, God, and that, you know, all of us separate entities are actually just one whole body in Christ. And that I uh, pray that we'll be able to uh, remind ourselves of that and that we're not alone, even though it may feel like that at times, God. And God, I pray that we continue to encourage one another uh, weekly and more and just to support 
even though we cannot be there um, in person, that we're there in faith, God. And God, we just pray that um, not only do we uh, draw our strength from you, but also to draw it from you through others, God. And pray as brothers and sisters that we can um, just support and love one another and bring each other up uh, during these times. And uh, God, I just want to pray um, for just uh, for the continued strength during these times uh, and the times ahead, God. And I pray that we'll be able to um, be stronger, be closer through all of this, um, no matter what it is. And lastly, that brings us to our last point uh, to just pray for comfort and guidance for those who are weary to know that all is according to his purpose. Um, we know that we've uh, recently we've lost um, uh, the Wendy Liu, and I just want to also pray for uh, the loss of loved ones as the ones that at least they're back with God and that they're no longer in pain. And also want to pray for um, those who are, you know, feeling, you know, weary and those who are suffering to pray for continued strength and healing. Um, God, I just want to thank you again for all that you've done for us, God. And God, I also just pray um, for comfort for those, uh, for the loved ones that, uh, that have been lost um, and that know that they've been reunited with you, God. And God, I also pray for um, the families. I pray that you give them comfort and strength and um, to know that, you know, that their family is up there with you and happy and no longer um, in pain. And God, I also pray for those in the front lines uh, working in the hospital. And I just pray that you also give them in strength and um, just support during these times when they're uh, working really hard, God. And God, I just pray that your hand is with them as they continue to help heal and to, um, you know, um, just uh, heal and help those who are the sick. And God, I pray for also those who are sick that you um, are with them and know that they're um, not alone, God. And God, I just pray for um, today's service and for worship and for the message today that we um, can feel your presence here with us, God. And uh, thank you. And do you pray? Amen. All right, um, this concludes our Sunday morning prayer, and good morning.
morning, FCOC family. Um, start the word of prayer today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for today. Um, again, allowing us this opportunity to meet online. Uh, just pray for just the message, the time of prayer, the time of worship. Um, yeah, Lord, just everything that we offer up into your hands today, Lord. Um, just, uh, Lord, just the, uh, be with us, meet with us as we meet with you um, in our individual homes, Lord. Uh, even though we're apart, but we're together in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. In his name, 
we overcome for the Lord our God is able God is with us God is on our side he will make a way Far above we know, far above we know, you has done great things, lifted up, defeated the grave, raised to life, our God is able, in his name we overcome, for the Lord. Our God is able, lifted up, he defeated the grave, raised to life. Our God is able, in his name we overcome. For the Lord, our God is able, God is with us. Will go before you never leave us, you never leave us. God is for us, He has open arms, you never fail us, you never fail us. God is with us, He will go before you never leave us, you never leave us. God is for us, He has opened arms, you never fail us, you never fail us, lifted up, He defeated the grave, raised to life, our God is able, in His name we overcome, for the Lord. Our God is able, oh the Lord, our God is able, oh the Lord, our God is able. Forever, 
heart of my salvation. We rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever, offer us salvation. We rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shall the light in let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shall the light in let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shall the light in, let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shall the light in, let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Offer us salvation. We rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, offer us salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. This God, you are the mighty and awesome Savior that came down from heavens to this earth to die for us, to rescue us, to redeem us for yourself. And we celebrate that this morning, even as the world searches for hope, we as the church already have a savior. We don't trust in things of this world. We don't trust in even medicine and doctors. We don't trust in politicians or leaders. We trust in the Lord. We trust in you. So this morning, as we praise you, we just affirm that we have no greater hope in this life but you. Thank you for being a compassionate and merciful God. We come before you. We offer you our songs. We offer you our hearts. May you be glorified. May you be lifted up wherever we are this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hello, brothers and sisters. It's great to be with you this morning. Um, even though we're apart, we're worshiping the Lord together in spirit. And, and so... Uh, rejoice in that. Um, just a couple announcements before we get into today's message. Next Sunday is Mother's Day, so we'll be having a joint online service, trying it out. Um, Andrea will be translating. Uh, Pastor Peter Chen's wife will be the speaker. Um, so we'll be together with the Mandarin Taiwanese congregations next Sunday. Okay. We'll still have prayer uh, at 9.30. So Barbara will be leading this, this month. Uh, please join uh, at 9.30. The other announcement, uh, most of you already know that last Sunday, one of our sisters, uh, Wendy Liu, went to be with the Lord. Um, this is a difficult time, as you would imagine, for the entire Liu family. So let's remember to pray for them as they go through this grieving and mourning process. Uh, and with that, please bow your heads with me um, and let's lift them up uh, this morning. 
Heavenly Father, um, even though we come this morning uh, with the joy that you have given us, there is also um, a heaviness uh, knowing that one of our family members um, is no longer with us. Um, our sister Wendy Lou, um, who had been battling uh, cancer for some time, uh, has gone to be with you and Lord, we, we feel the pain. Um, we can imagine uh, for Elder Bing and Josh, Justin, Johanna, their extended family, please cover them uh, with your peace. Uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, even as their hearts ache and there's uh, this season um, that may seem like it goes on and on. Um, God, would you walk with them through this, this valley and be their hope, be their strength for the entire uh, OC family. We know that Sister Wendy uh, meant a lot um, and that you used her in many ways to touch many lives. We pray, Lord, that um, you would be the, the one who cares, uh, be the good shepherd, who holds the church um, and brings a comfort that only you can bring in this time. And God, as we bring uh, ourselves to your word, open our hearts and open our minds uh, to your spirit. Help us to see uh, the truth that you have made known to us in scripture um, and lead us to uh, a life that is uh, pleasing to you. Uh, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I, I want to begin this morning um, with a picture that we've all seen before, I think, on TV or in movies. It's where a person is, is thinking to themselves. It's usually about a hard decision or what to do in a difficult situation. And then there are these two little figures that pop up next to the person's ears, one on each shoulder, sometimes sitting and sometimes standing. You got the, the little red devil typically holding a pitchfork with a big grin on his face. And then there's the little angel, the little white angel with wings and a glowing halo. And each one takes turns whispering or sometimes screaming into the person's ears. The little devil, of course, represents temptation. And he's trying to convince the person to do something bad, to do something wrong or illegal. And then the little angel is usually representing the person's conscience. And he's trying to stop the person from doing something bad. And at times, even telling them to do what's right. Now, in certain aspects, this, this picture does a great job of portraying the internal struggle, the, the, the dilemma that we experience when we face temptation, when we're not sure whether to do what's, what we know is right or to go for what feels right at the moment. But, you know, there's a problem with this picture, as familiar as it is and as as uh, you know, popular as it is to, to use this image, there's a problem. God is absent. God is absent, which explains why the little devil tends to win the person over a lot of times. Because the angel, as holy as he may appear to be, the angel is no match for the devil. And it actually makes sense and resonates with us when it comes to our experience. See, the picture presents this idea that we're facing temptation on our own. Like there's this internal devil and an internal angel who's not even close to the Holy Spirit. And they're going to battle his side. Or you have this evil side or this good side. Either way, this comedic and often cartoonish image only adds to the thinking that you know we're when we face temptation we're basically on our own god isn't there 
But as we continue in the Lord's Prayer today, we're reminded that this simply is not true. If you have your Bibles, um, turn to Matthew chapter 6. We're looking at verse 13 today. This is the Lord's Prayer. The first half, if you've been going uh, tracking along with us, the first half was all about God. And then in the second half, we've been looking at the last couple of weeks, Jesus lays out three requests to regularly present to the Father. The first was, give us this day our daily bread. After looking to God to provide our physical material needs, Jesus then teaches us to turn to God for our spiritual needs. And the first one there was, forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. We looked at that last Sunday. It teaches us that first, we all need God's mercy, but that we also need to forgive others if we want God to forgive us. Because the difference between restoring our relationship with God and also restoring our fellowship with God. Now, the last prayer in the Lord's Prayer, this last request, also addresses a spiritual need. And before we go on, I think it's worth noting the greater emphasis on spiritual needs here that Jesus makes. We know God definitely cares about our physical needs, but clearly, as we look at the Lord's Prayer, our spiritual needs are of greater priority to God, which means as much as we pray for our physical and material needs, we should be even more prayerful about our spiritual needs, even more concerned about the spiritual welfare. Something to consider as we pray. So now this final request is, is, is here. It's closely related to the previous one, Matthew 6, 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We've already recognized from last week's passage that we will all sin every day. And Jesus teaches us to confess our sins, and to ask God to forgive us daily. But that doesn't mean we, we just think to ourselves, well, I'm going to sin all the time, every day, but God will forgive me. Therefore, I'll just give in and then ask to be forgiven every time. That's not the right mindset. See, God is merciful, but he's more than willing to forgive us when we confess our sins. And as we saw last week, when we forgive others who sinned against us. But he also doesn't want to see us falling into sin in the first place. So if the previous line in this prayer we were asking God to forgive our sins. This line is a call to God to help us fight off our sin. So let's break this down. First, let's understand what temptation is. The word in the Greek is perasmos, meaning a trial or a test or a temptation. Trials and tests are generally are, they're generally viewed as a positive thing. I know we don't like to take tests. We don't like to go through tests. But the, the purpose of a test is generally a positive one, where the goal is to strengthen us, to develop perseverance and character, to prove our faith and our faithfulness as we go through the trial and we pass the test. In 1 Peter chapter 1, Peter says, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, referring to persecution. He uses the word perasmos. But these have come so that your faith may be proved genuine. So you see, trials are meant to prove the genuineness of our faith, to refine our faith. On the other hand, perasmos can also be temptation, which is the negative side to this word. And the purpose of temptation is very different. It's to get us to fall into sin, to give in to our selfish and evil desires. And it often leaves us guilty, ashamed, and discouraged when we fall, when we fail. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul says, people who want to get rich fall into temptation 
this perasmos and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. Tests and temptations are all difficult, challenging, uncomfortable, and even painful. But whereas tests are intended to measure our strength and designed to build us up, temptations are aimed at exposing our weaknesses. And they're set up for us to stumble. And since they both come from the same word, perasmos, context determines the meaning. And given the immediate context of the word here, Jesus, we can see, is clearly referring to temptation. In James chapter 1, the Apostle James says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. See, temptation always involves some degree of weakness. That's why God, as he is, cannot be tempted because he is the perfect one. He is perfect in every way and has no weakness. So you might wonder, but wasn't Jesus tempted? Yes. But then how could Jesus, the perfect son of God, be tempted? Well, because he was also truly human as the son of man. Though he was not born with a sinful nature, he took on flesh like us, and he experienced human weakness and vulnerability like us. All of these genuine human experiences, he felt hunger and thirst. He felt rejection and loneliness. He felt frustration and anger at times. He felt pain and suffering. And these human experiences meant that he experienced temptations like us as well. I would argue even greater temptations, but that's a different subject. He knows what it's like when we are tempted to sin. He knows that we need help when we face temptation. Daily help, just like we need daily bread and daily mercy and forgiveness. We need daily help when we face temptation. And this prayer, this line in the Lord's Prayer, forgive to not lead us to temptation, but to deliver us from evil. It's a reminder to be aware of our temptations and our weakness in facing them. See, as sinners, we don't need Satan to experience temptation. As James describes, we're all dragged away, each one of us, enticed by our own evil desires. Now, James states clearly that God does not tempt us. So then why are we asking God here not to lead us into temptation? Seems a little odd if God doesn't tempt us. What does Jesus mean by this phrase, lead us not into temptation? God to keep us away from temptation altogether? Or are we asking God to keep us from giving in to temptation when it comes? To put it another way, is this about removing temptation or resisting temptation? To answer that, let's consider the way Matthew describes how Jesus was tempted. In Matthew chapter 4, it says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Are you? You got the devil is the one who actually tempts Jesus. But who led Jesus into the desert to be tempted? The spirit. Not an evil spirit or a demonic spirit. The Holy Spirit. He led Jesus into, this, into the desert, not into temptation. But he led him into the desert to be tempted. What does this tell us? While God does not tempt us, he does allow us and even lead us to experience temptation in the world through our own flesh and even from the devil himself at times. 
God doesn't shield us completely from the evil opportunities around us, nor does he completely remove the evil desires within us. We're not spiritually quarantined off from temptation. That's the truth. That's the reality. Therefore, I believe that when Jesus says, lead us not into temptation, that, that those two words, into temptation, means giving in. Not simply facing temptation, but falling, falling for it and sinning. And this prayer strongly implies that left to ourselves, we're prone to give in to temptation and sin. That's why we're asking God to help us. What are we asking him to do in this prayer? The first thing is we're calling on God to help us to resist temptation. This prayer is not about removing temptation, but resisting it. This is a plea for God to help us when we face temptation so that we don't fall into it and sin. We're asking God for strength when we're faced with difficult struggles and situations that appeal to our selfish and sinful desires. And we all go through them every day. This is an honest and humble admission of our weakness and our vulnerability. And thus, our desperate need for God's help. Some of us, at times, we might picture God as this passive observer when we face temptation. Like he's holding a clipboard and he's watching us and taking notes as we're being tempted, recording our thoughts, tracing, tracking our guilt levels, measuring our ability to resist sin. Like he's there, but he's not there to help me. This is my battle. I have to fight this temptation myself. Well, Jesus' words here are a reminder that although God allows us to experience temptation, he is not a passive observer. He's always there to help us. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Now, this is probably where we get the, the familiar phrase, God will never give us more than we can handle. You've, you've heard this, I'm sure, and you've probably said this before. But think about this phrase, God will never give us more than we can handle. I know it sounds like a nice thing to say, but it's actually not true. Because if we could truly bear the temptations ourselves, we would not need God. And that idea definitely does not come from Paul. The more biblically grounded promise is God will never give us more than we can handle when we rely on him. When we turn to him. Because God is faithful. And his faithfulness extends to us in a second promise here. Right? The first one is he will not give us more than we can handle when we rely on him. But the second promise is this. He will always provide a way out from temptation so we can stand up under it. Again, that tells us that God will let us be tempted. But he will also be there to help us. He did not promise to remove temptation from our lives, but he promised to give us a way out to withstand and to overcome temptation. So brothers and sisters, along with asking God to forgive us, are we also calling on God to help us resist temptation? Are we calling on him to help us to keep us from sinning? That's what Jesus is teaching us here. Now, when we say lead us, lead us not into temptation, understand what we're saying. Lead us, it means we're ready and willing to follow. This prayer 
is us surrendering to God and following his lead. And deliver us from evil. Well, by definition, that means take me from evil and direct me towards what is good. Direct us to the good. So what are we asking God here in this prayer? To help us resist temptation, yes. And at the same time, we're calling on God to lead us toward what is good. We prayed in the previous line, forgive us our debts. But then now we're saying, deliver us from evil. See, Jesus is teaching his disciples. He's teaching us that we're not just seeking forgiveness, but also righteousness. That's where God wants to lead us. He's, he wants to deliver us from evil and lead us to righteousness. Not into temptation, but into righteousness. Psalm 23, a very popular, famous psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. Well, in verse 3, it says, The Lord guides us in paths of righteousness. God wants to lead us into righteousness. So most, sometimes we forget that. Let me pose a scenario for you. What if, what if we could all... What if we could have all of our sins forgiven and not have to change a single thing about ourselves or about the way we live? Imagine that. Hypothetically speaking, imagine we could have full forgiveness for our sins and not have to change how we live, change who we are at all. How many of us would honestly find that refreshing? You get a free pass to heaven. And you get to live however you want on this earth. Some of us would consider that the best of both worlds, to use that phrase. You know, but if that's how we see it, then I don't think we really understand what it means to be a child of God. What it means to be a follower of Christ. What it means to be part of God's kingdom. I think we've actually misunderstood the gospel. You take a different picture here. Picture us all as guilty, convicted criminals serving life sentences, even on death row, because that's what we are spiritually. But then out of his mercy, God, the judge, decides to pardon us. Our records are wiped clean. We're released from our prison sentence and we're granted freedom. But what will we do with our freedom? Will we go back to our old life of crime? Or will we want to pursue a better life now that we're out, now that our debt is gone? See, forgiveness is like being pardoned. We're released from our debt. The penalty has been fully paid, and we're free to go. But godliness, righteousness, is like turning away from our old life of crime and choosing to live the right way. Forgiveness means that our records are now clean. But godliness is where our hearts actually become clean. Let me ask you, do we really want to be rescued from evil? Do we really want to be delivered from evil? We want to be forgiven. But do we really want to be led away from our sin and led toward righteousness? We often pray to God, asking him to rescue us from suffering and hardship. But how often do we ask God to rescue us from evil, from our sin, from things that are not good, from things that are not pleasing to him? Jesus' words here this morning challenge us to stop and examine our hearts. Do we just want to be forgiven of our sins? Or do we really want to be delivered from our sins? Do we want what David describes in Psalm 23 for the Lord to guide us in paths of righteousness? Now, even as we pray, deliver us from evil, there is this deep peace that we know 
in one sense. Our Heavenly Father has already done this when he sent his son to save us from our sins, to rescue sinners, to deliver us from the wrath of God that we deserve by dying for us on the cross. Jesus rescued us from sin, death, and Satan. But in another sense, there's still this ongoing battle with sin, right? There's a daily battle, which, which means there's a daily salvation from sin that we can't experience throughout our lives. Yes, there is salvation that happens once and for all when we put our faith in Christ in the beginning. But there's also this daily salvation that is being worked out. Some might prefer to call it sanctification. But regardless of what we call it, we're engaged in a daily battle against sin. And this doesn't diminish at all what Christ did for us on the cross. It actually testifies to you. What Jesus did on the cross actually gives us the courage to fight these daily battles with sin because we have the confidence that he has already won. And that his victory will be fully revealed in time. But as we await that final victory, let's remember these words Paul says in Titus chapter 2. The grace of God has that brings salvation has appeared to all men. And it teaches us, the grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. In other words, to resist temptation. And it also teaches us to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. In other words, to follow God towards what is good. You see, we need God's mercy to be forgiven. And we need God's grace to resist evil and do what is good. Jesus' words today are first a reminder that forgiveness is not the end goal. As believers who continue to deal with the presence of sin in the world around us and also in our own hearts, fighting sin and walking in righteousness is a daily battle. But we can't fight sin on our own. We're too weak on our own. So we turn to our Heavenly Father, who is strong, who is able, whose grace is enough for us. And we pray, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. In church, God is faithful. When temptation comes our way, he is always there, and he is there to help us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are the Holy One, the one who is worthy of all praise and glory. This morning we pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Help us to resist our sins, to not fall for the temptation. We know that we cannot avoid temptation in this life. It will be there, trying to pull us into sin, trying to pull us away from you. But our prayer is that you would strengthen us. You would pull us towards you. That you would draw us towards righteousness. You would draw us towards godliness. Draw us to you and to your goodness. We are too weak to fight this battle on our own. So we give praise and we thank you that your grace is enough for us. Your grace is gives us strength and power, the self-control to resist and to turn to you, to obey you, to worship you. Thank you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
precious truth Don't you give up, I'll be a fool You are my own strength when we are weak which means you are always the strength that we need because we're always weak but the good news is that you are always strong and you are stronger than our temptations you are stronger than our sin so we rejoice in that and we remember i hope that we remember that when temptation comes and it will come soon and it will come frequently let us remember to turn our eyes to you, not to look to ourselves, lest we be discouraged and defeated, but let us look to you, to our Savior who bled and died on the cross to give us the victory, a victory that we have every single day when we turn to you. Let us rely on your strength so that we can be able to resist our temptation, that we don't fall into sin. But let us turn to you to be our righteousness and to lead us to righteousness. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in your name. Amen. And that concludes our service this morning. A reminder, we have life groups uh, shortly. So if you are already in the Zoom um, group, then you're good to go. Uh, Andrea is going to break us off into breakout rooms. So 
um, enjoy small group time and sharing and reflecting on the, the word today. God bless you. Have a great week. See you next time.